Hey everyone, how's it going today? Hope you're all doing really well. Uh, weekend's coming up, so I'm sure you guys got some plans. So thank you guys for joining me on this Friday night or Saturday morning whenever I decide to upload this. But welcome! Uh, for those of you who are new, uh, I am a Zoomerol Fairy. I like to do a lot of Dead Cells runs. And I am kind of shifting right now towards more strategy guides. And this is a strategy guide on the Rhythm and Bazooki. New weapon that was unlocked in the Bad Seed DLC. Uh, it, the blueprint for it drops from the Tick mini boss from the Moras. Uh, the way to get to Moras, uh, there's several ways. Um, and by several, I mean there's like two ways. So you can either go from directly from the Dilapidated Arboretum or you can go from Prison Depths. So those are the two ways to get there. Um, however you decide to get to Prison Depths or Dilapidated Arboretum, um, that's up to you. Uh, but from there, you basically go to the Moras, kill the Tick, Get the Rhythm and Bazooki. So that's how you get that. Um, the Rhythm and Bazooki is a really cool weapon in that it's very timing dependent. But even if you aren't timing things that well, you still get good damage off. So it's one strike that's pretty quick for a melee survival weapon. And every other strike after that, if you time it correctly, you'll get a critical hit. And the critical hit is a lot of damage. So the second strike is a little bit after the first strike. And the third, fourth, fifth, etc., uh, those are quick. So as soon as you hit that third strike and you see the guitar come around, then you got to press for the fourth and the fifth and etc. So you can get unlimited crits theoretically. Whether or not that actually plays out in your uh, rhythm and bazooki play, probably not going to happen. Most you're probably going to get off as like four or five in a row. And that's like for the giant's eye, and that's about it. Um, but I'm going to be showing both brutality and melee footage. Um, and the way I'm going to be doing this is a little bit different than my blowgun uh, strategy guide because it's pretty straightforward what works well with Rhythm and Bazooki. And I figured for this one, I think what would be more useful is showing footage of how to handle each boss. So I do have footage of, I think, every single boss not named Concierge. I believe that is the case. Um, but if you want to check out a Concierge battle that's like kind of half-assed, you can check out my intro to Rhythm and Bazooki before the Bad Seed update. I'll leave a card or something like that, and you can check that out. But yeah, so I'm going to get into the Brutality first, and then the Survival. Talk about what works well, what doesn't work well, what mutations to take, what skills and shields and um, other secondary weapons you might want to take. Same thing with Survival, and that's generally how this is going to go. So with that, leave a like, comment for more Dead Cells, and enjoy this video, everybody. And I'm editing this in just after I finished recording the intro. But I actually just found out some really, really cool information about the Rhythm and Bazooki that I think you guys might want to know. So credit to Colors and a bunch of Japanese symbols on YouTube. I'm going to link his video in the description. And uh, also credit to user, let me look it up, uh, JDB Cool. And uh, basically, the Rhythm and Bazooki has a very specific timing, as I've said. But this timing is a little bit easier than you might think. If you have access to a metronome, or you can just Google metronome, look at 98 beats per minute, and that's the rhythm in which you want to uh, hit bazooki. So as I do this, I'm gonna Google some uh, songs in 98 beats per minute. So if you wanna get a feel for what that is. Uh, hey Soul Sister by Train, I hate that song, but if you like it, then go for it. Uh, Single Ladies, iconic. Crazy in Love, iconic. Uh, Sweet Home Alabama, Back in Black, all of those are in 98 beats per minute. So uh, if you want to play Rhythm and Bazooki and you want to listen to some Beyonce, go for it. Uh, but again, thank you to those two guys. Again, uh, that's JDB Cool on Reddit and Colors with the Japanese symbols on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to link his video in the description. And yeah, thank you guys. Enjoy the run. So with Brutality, the Rhythm and Bazooki is pretty straightforward. So... Uh, think of it like any other melee weapon, except there might be like a couple other dimensions to it that apply specifically to the weapon. So uh, one mutation that I recommend is Open Wounds just because you get that bleed affix. Uh, melee, the melee mutation is really good because it's a slower weapon so you can slow down enemies on contact and getting those consecutive hits will be really beneficial. Uh, things that can uh, reduce damage, so such as Berserker, Vengeance, and um, Soldier's Resistance, uh, things with melee's management are also incredibly helpful because um, something that you might encounter when running something like the Rhythm and Bazooki is that because in Brutality you're using a slower weapon, um, the skills and things like that that you have 
uh, kind of depend on faster weapons. So what I mean by this is like something like a fire grenade. Um, you throw it and then the thing is it does a great amount of damage, but it also means that like it's usually going to be paired with something like a high boosted gauntlets or like a Seda Stiletto or something that like is like a lot faster. Whereas like a Rhythm and Bazooki is a little bit slower. So you got to be a little bit more mindful of like your malaise count. If you're running four or five BC, you also got to be aware of like how much damage you're taking. Cause on survival, you can like face tank pretty much the entire game, but in brutality, you don't, you're not really afforded that opportunity to do that. So that's like the main thing that I would recommend is if you're going to run it on brutality, definitely make use of the uh, malaise reducing or the damage reducing mutations. As far as, you know, uh, skill cooldown, uh, it's the same as always. If you're going to do that, Killer Instinct is really good for the biomes. Uh, for bosses, uh, for like the last boss, I would probably use Instinct the Master of Arms. You can, you'll be able to get enough crits off on the boss. You can get at least two. So the first strike isn't a crit, but the uh, second and third hits are crits. You should be able to get those crits off pretty quickly um, and pretty frequently as well. Um, I would say that, you know, in terms of mutations, um, really go with what your support weapon is or what your shield is and then what your skills are. Um, it's okay to re-roll them multiple times. Um, I would really just kind of keep track of like where the build is and what you think the synergy should be or where it is at the moment uh, because you really want to make sure that like the build just synergizes well together. So as far as support weapons and shields are concerned, uh, there's a lot of different options that you can run here. Uh, one option is having like a faster melee weapon, um, but the issue with this is um, you might as well just use that weapon or you might as well just use the rhythm and bazooki. But there are situations in which yeah, you can um, try to make use of another melee weapon. So something like the Spartan Sandals would be uh, pretty beneficial because you can kick enemies off like ledges and things like that. Um, for elites, like you can smack them against the wall and then use the rhythm and bazooki to finish, finish them off. Um, there's like there's different options that you can use as far as other melee weapons. Um, I would say stay away from that because that's not as efficient. I would say take advantage of the more ranged options that you have, which there are a few. So something you can do, you can have uh, firebrands, throwing knife, or alchemic carbine. Those are always really good. Ice shards is also really good because of that slowdown. Um, something else that I would really try and think about is using the boys axe. Boys Axe snares enemies, which means that for things like bosses who aren't snared for long, but they get snared for a decent amount of time, uh, you can get crits off in a row. For elites, you can you can get multiple you can get multiple crits off and get the kill like super super easily. So I would really recommend doing something like that um, if you're gonna use a ranged option. Um, as far as shields are concerned, you know you only have two options for brutality shields, so. Both of them are great. Uh, Bloodthirsty Shield gives you like an area of effect for the blood. Frontline Shield will give you a higher damage output. And for an already powerful weapon, it actually works really well. And I, what I would actually recommend is using it using Frontline Shield against bosses, because I feel like because of the extra damage, you're already using a really powerful weapon, and you make it more powerful. And if it has blood synergy, you can just use open wounds with it. Uh, get that 60% to bleed, use that in combination with the frontline shield, and you just got a smacking machine. So that is kind of the whole thing with uh, melee and uh, brutality. So there's a lot of different things I can take advantage of, but for the most part, it's it can be used as your standard brutality weapon. Survival is actually really straightforward when it comes to rhythm and bazooki. Uh, you would run pretty much the same build as you would run on any other melee survival weapon. Uh, the only difference is that Rhythm and Bazooki is better than, in my opinion, every other melee survival weapon. Um, and I'm going to do like a very short tier list for 1.7 just because not much changed. Uh, but I'm going to tell you right now, Rhythm Bazooki is going to be near the top, uh, probably S tier because of how good it is. Um, I think that as far as melee survival weapons go, it's very fast. Um, it's versatile, it's unique, uh, it's got a great crit condition uh, that you gotta kind of keep doing over and over again. Um, but it works well in a survival setting. So as far as mutations are concerned, um, it depends if you're taking a shield or not. It depends on what the affixes are in your rhythm and bazooki. 
So what I mean by this is if you have something that gives freeze, so ice shield, ice bow, ice crossbow, and frost blast, uh, all four of those, or if you have a shield that like does freeze, um, you can equip the heart of ice and or the, uh, what's it called, the frostbite mutations. And essentially what those do is that nearby enemies, if they're slow, they'll take damage. So heart of, uh, so when you freeze an enemy, they'll start taking damage from the frostbite mutation because that's just how it works or if they're immobilized you can use like a wolf trap or a uh, root grenade or something like that and then you can just smack them with a rhythm bazooki you're good to go um but there's an affix on i think plus plus and s tier weapons i think plus would have it too um and that is the victim's nearby slowdown affix uh so what that does is that every every enemy that is within vicinity uh, I don't know the exact like definition of it, but within the vicinity, every enemy will slow down. You equip that with Frostbite, they'll take some residual damage, which means that you can get kills off on them faster and clear out some mobs. Uh, it works It works really, really well against more fragile enemies, but more deadly enemies. Basically, I'm talking about kamikazes, because as soon as you get a hit off, all the kamikazes around you start dying. If you've, if you've ever done the uh, victim slow down nearby and then the frostbite mutations, you'll notice that all the kamikazes around you will start dying. And for a weapon that is not slow, but not fast either, it's always good to be able to uh, get rid of kamikazes before you have to deal with them any further. But not just that, um, you do extra damage on bosses if you want to uh, trap them. So frostbite works really well. Heart of Ice is really good because um, if you trap or freeze or um what is it what's the other one slow down any enemy you get you get um cooldown on your skills and the thing about survival skills is that the cooldown is is huge so things like death orb and giant's whistle have an extremely long cooldown so heart of ice works really well in that capacity um i would say any shield really works again i still i still think the best the best shield for this weapon is the frontline shield just because it's easy to get crits on this weapon and it's a pretty fast melee survival weapon so for those six or so seconds that you have a damage boost you're going to be able to get a big big damage boost from the frontline shield if that makes sense um the other thing that i would say is punishment works really well more offensive shields i would recommend with this weapon but cudgel also works extremely well ramparts also works really well i actually take that back you don't necessarily need an offensive shield but you need a you need a shield uh that is going to be able to like give some sort of status like a burn poison bleed or even freeze um so those work really well um other mutations that I would suggest. I know I kind of I'm jumping around from skills and abil skills to mutations, things like that. But uh, other mutations, obviously, your blind fates of the world, your necromancies of the world, your dead insides, uh, your instinct of the master of arms, and then any other survival mutation that you personally like, um, you can use in it. Um, if you want to use, uh, you can even like use something like acceptance, because if you're in the morass or something like that, and then you have trouble with certain enemies, um, acceptance works really well. Uh, I would even say like you can equip that with dead inside and then you have 16 malaise points and you can just use the uh, the malaise reducer thingy uh, and you have necromancy and so you can take acceptance and that should be totally fine um, so there you have a lot of options that you can run with and I know that I said that I don't like acceptance personally and, and I don't maybe I did rate it too low on my tier list but um, you know that that's just an opinion um acceptance does work in a lot of situations i just don't like it um but it can work pretty well with this sort of build um and something else that i hadn't talked about but i kind of mentioned a little bit here and there is uh freezing so in, i'm gonna show you some footage in a little bit of the ice bow and the frost blast kind of working with this build and in 1.5 i believe the devs made it or 1.4 1.5 the devs made it so that freeze was a much more viable option for uh survival freezing so instead of running a shield you can run something like an ice bow and your uh, rhythm and bazooki and that's exactly what i did in my latest 5bc run um i have both the brutality and the survival ones but i'm not going to upload either one of them unless you guys want me to 
um, but the ice bow worked really really well with this weapon because I could just freeze an enemy go to town on it and that got me cooldown they got me frostbite it got me a bunch of stuff and it's really really uh, cool to see so I really enjoyed uh, doing that um, I it's very effective too because for a slower type of weapon getting that sort of damage off is nice uh, because you're pretty much guaranteed a crit at that point so you can kill elites very very easily so I definitely recommend freeze shields are always good but other than that it's more or less your standard survival melee so that's the rhythm and bazooki in a nutshell I know I kind of went back and forth between the brutality and the survival and I know that it was kind of like um, a little bit different than what I normally do I know it's a lot different than the blowgun strategy guide which I thought was a little more complex uh, this was more a little straightforward. Uh, the Rhythm and Bazooki is just a fantastic weapon. I think it's one of the best weapons in the entire game right now because the damage is great, the speed is good, and it's just like a beefy weapon. It works in both brutality and survival contexts. Um, I think that all the mutations and the uh, support that I can get uh, make it an outstanding weapon. Like I said, uh, whenever I do that tier list, it's definitely going to be in that S tier because I think it's that good. Um... And yeah, uh, let me know in the comments what you thought of this strategy guide. Um, I know it was a little bit different, like I said. Uh, so uh, let me know what you want to see next. I know I got the scythe, I got the smoke bomb, and I have one other thing that I'm kind of forgetting right now. But um, I know I have a couple left. And uh, I actually i am going to do a Spartan Sandals one because I think the Spartan Sandals uh, strategy guide will be really fun to use. Uh, I have so much footage that I cannot wait to show you guys about that. But leave a like, subscribe for more Death Souls, and have a good night, everybody. One day I woke up, I didn't have shit. I had to work hard just to grab this. Blue faces stacked up, that's my fetish. I'm ready, I'm ready for these bandages. They said I wouldn't make it, who asked to? I got brought into this life I didn't ask to. I'ma make most of it all, cause I had to. You get money from your mama, I chase it because I had to.